Coming up tonight on YCN News, jury selection is underway for murder suspect James Robarge. YCN News speaks with U.S. Senator Kelly Ayotte. And a Sunapee convenience store burns down. For more news, weather and sports, it's time for YCN, your local view. Now, your daily digest of the Dartmouth Lake Sunapee region, southern Vermont, and Windsor County. News, sports, weather, and all that is happening in our area. The news on YCN, your local view. Good evening and welcome to this Monday edition of YCN News. I'm Laura James. Jury selection is underway in Newport Superior Court regarding the trial of James Robarge, accused of allegedly murdering his wife in summer of 2013. Robarge, awaiting trial in county jail, is charged by state prosecutors with one count of first-degree murder and one count of second-degree murder. Jurors will be interviewed by a judge and attorneys for the state and defense before a jury of 16, that's 12 people, plus several alternate jurors, is selected. Kelly Robarge went missing June 27th after filing for divorce from James. Kelly's remains were found July 3rd in a grassy field in Unity. If the case continues to trial, Robarge will be represented by a public defender. The couple has two adult children. U.S. Senator from New Hampshire Kelly Ayotte spoke today at the Charlestown VFW Hall. She reviewed her previous legislative initiatives and outlined her priorities for the current session and future sessions. Much of her presentation focused on long-term domestic budget issues, including the federal deficit, tax reform, and protecting Social Security. After Ayotte's prepared remarks, New Hampshire State Senator Jerry Little moderated questions from the audience for the senator. YCN News' John O'Connor caught up with Senator Ayotte afterwards. First question is, what are your legislative priorities for the upcoming session? So my legislative priorities are, first of all, uh, we've got to get the Senate back operating. A responsible budget for the nation. I serve on the Budget Committee. The appropriations bills, where we're really having oversight over federal agencies and how they're spending your dollars. And most of all, uh, ensuring that we have the best climate for jobs. And that means, I think, simplifying our tax code, making sure it's competitive, and also a regulatory climate. I hear so much from businesses in New Hampshire that often some of the rules and regulations that come down from Washington make it more difficult to do business. And so really cutting through that red tape to make it easier for New Hampshire businesses to put people to work. Um, and what did you hear from the people today that you're going to take back with you to Washington? Well, I heard a number of uh, for issues about, for example, uh, accountability in the VA, which I will take back. We're in, obviously, a VFW right now. I'm concerned about the fiscal state of the country and also uh, regulatory climate for businesses and Social Security. How do we preserve that program so it's there for future generations? So the Congress is in one party's hands, the executive office is in the others. Do you believe there are areas where you two can reach across the aisle to work together? Uh, I do. I believe we have to um, because we all are, care about the fiscal state of the country and making sure that our economy is strong. So we have to look for common areas where we can work together. And I hope that the president is serious about working with us because I certainly will work with him if there's ways we can work together to, again, uh, on the issues I just talked about, making sure we have a responsible budget, making sure that our businesses and workers have the best climate so that we can have good paying jobs in this country. Ayotte was first elected to the Senate in 2010. The owner of a Sunapee convenience store destroyed by fire yesterday is vowing to rebuild. Karen Timbrell tells YCN News Today the intention is to rebuild Jake's Market. It's too important a community asset not to rebuild, Timbrell said. Too important to the people who work there and to the people who rely on the store each day. The fire at the George's Mills store was discovered by an on-duty Sunapee police officer, Tim Therian, reported the Eagle Times. Around 12.19 a.m., Therian looked into the building in response to a burglary alarm going off at the store. As these images show, the store is a total loss, yet is insured. This in from the U.S. Ski Association, a New Hampshire state skier is among two U.S. skiers killed in an avalanche in Austria. 
20-year-old Ronnie Burlack of Franconia, and fellow athlete 19-year-old Bryce Assel of Sandy, Utah, both were killed today. Four other skiers on the team escaped the thundering snow slide. Burlack grew up racing in New Hampshire and has been a student athlete at Vermont's Burke Academy in the Northeast Kingdom. Both skiers were passionate about their sport, says U.S. Ski and Snowboard Association President and CEO Tiger Shaw in a statement. Shaw extends sympathies to both Burlack and Assel's families and their extended sport family. Turning to state politics, Vermont legislators return to Montpelier this week to open a new session. An early order of business will be to elect my secret ballot a governor. That's because none of the candidates seeking the top seat received at least 50 percent majority of the popular vote. Incumbent Democratic Governor Peter Shumlin will face off against Republican challenger Scott Milne. Meanwhile, resolving state financial problems are at the top of lawmakers' to-do list as the Vermont budget is short by about $100 million. It remains to be seen if taxes will need to increase to make up for this gap. On the other side of the Connecticut River, New Hampshire legislators will determine what bills to work on and which ones to cast aside. Topics among the bills for review during the 2015 session include whether the state should elect a governor every four years instead of every two. As proposed, the bill would call for voters to elect a new governor for a four-year term beginning with the 2018 general election. The bill sponsors include Mario Ratsky of East Andover, David Carrick of Warner, and John Cloutier of Claremont. Also, Rebecca Brown of Sugar Hill and Lou D'Alessandro of Manchester. Another bill that may move along this session includes requiring a defendant to be physically present in the courtroom during the reading of a victim impact statement. Also, ensuring colleges and universities adopt policies regarding sexual assault, domestic violence, dating violence, and stalking as a condition of receiving state funds for student financial assistance. Representative Rennie Cushing is the prime sponsor of both these bills. Cushing earlier was a guest on YCN's Capital Connections. After the break, we'll learn about Lebanon's search for a new city manager. The YCN News continues in a moment. Welcome back to YCN News. I'm Laura James. In Upper Valley News, Lebanon, New Hampshire will be looking for a new city manager. That search is getting underway as current city manager Greg Lewis has announced he will be leaving. The Valley News reports Lewis told counselors he's stepping down for family reasons. Lewis had wanted to serve the city for 10 years. Lewis made the announcement Friday on his blog, which can be found at lebnh.net slash news. His resignation will be effective July 4th. It looks like there will be new jobs becoming available for Vermont workers. The Vermont Economic Progress Council authorized incentives totaling $3.8 million under the Vermont Employment Growth Incentive Program. This will encourage the creation of 557 new, well-paying jobs for Vermonters. Average compensation will be in the range of $50,000. Now, companies included in the incentive program include Vermont Packing House of Springfield, Twin Craft Incorporated of Winooski, GS Blodger Corporation of Essex, Cabot Hosiery Mills of Northfield, Flexa Seal of Essex, National Hanger Company of Bennington, and Precise Solutions Statewide. These projects will also create about $21.4 million in new full-time payroll for Vermonters. And the companies plan to invest $37.7 million in qualifying capital investments in Vermont between 2014 and 2019. To earn the incentives, authorized companies must meet payroll, employment and capital investment performance requirements each year. Only if the tax department determines that the performance requirements are met and maintained, the incentive earned pays out to the company in five annual installments. The Vermont Economic Progress Council is attached to the Vermont Agency of Commerce and Community Development, whose mission is to help Vermonters improve their quality of life and build strong communities. Also in Vermont, a Springfield man will be in court later 
on charges stemming from a serious motor vehicle accident on December 23rd. 44-year-old Thomas Supernoise is charged by police with careless and negligent motor vehicle operation, driving with a suspended license and lying to a police officer, according to state police. It was minutes after 8 p.m. that state police went to a crash on I-91 in Rockingham of a report of a woman ejected from a car and pinned under the vehicle. Supernoise was also involved in the accident, yet at first he told police he was the passenger. At the hospital, the woman whom Supernoise said was his girlfriend could not recall the accident. During a follow-up interview on Friday, Supernoise told a trooper that he was in fact the driver. Supernoise will appear later this year in Wyndham County District Court on the charges. Well, it could be called a story of clashing generations, but the big buzz this weekend was over the Kanye West Paul McCartney collaboration. Kanye ended the new year not with the expected album, but with a very special song. Back in August, rumors circulated that he'd been in the studio with none other than Paul McCartney. And last week, Kanye West released to iTunes a song written with Sir Paul called Only One. It's one of the most personal and introspective songs Kanye has ever done. And you can stream that full track, by the way, on his website. Slate.com reported that West's connection to McCartney began with the famous Beatles song, Let It Be, which McCartney wrote in memory of his mother who died in 1956. Kanye, having lost his mother in 2007, like McCartney, also wrote a song, Only One, in honor of his mother. So what's the big buzz and chatter? After all, last year we saw duets from Lady Gaga and Tony Bennett. That didn't cause much of a stir. Well, in Kanye's case, it was the reaction his young following had. Some tweeting messages like, I don't know who Paul McCartney is, but isn't he lucky to have Kanye West give him such a break? And this will really start Paul McCartney's career. That's in direct contrast to the baby boomers who grew up with the Beatles and are all too familiar with Paul McCartney's subsequent 50-year career. Now, how do New Hampshire and Vermont students feel about the Beatles? And do younger students of music know who Paul McCartney is? Nicole Densmore is a musician and music teacher in the Upper Valley and stated that any knowledge of the Beatles usually occurs in music history class. Very few young students are listening to the Beatles on their own. She added that several years ago, we had an interactive video game where participants played guitar, bass, keyboard, and a drum set imitating a rock band. That was a disc that you could play that contained Beatles songs, and that brought their music to the age group. But when asked if her current students knew of the Beatles, she responded with a resounding but sad no. When YCN News returns, we'll join Kearsage Chronicle's Lynn Solomon, who spoke with Wally Borgen of the Kearsage Food Pantry. The YCN News continues in a moment. Welcome back to YCN News. I'm Laura James. Let's find out how that forecast is looking for the beginning of the week. Thanks, Laura. Tonight will be partly cloudy and we'll experience a chilly 3 degree low temperature. Winds are expected at 20 to 35 miles per hour. Tuesday will have a 50% chance of snow showers after 9 a.m. Highs will be near 18. Tuesday night will become cloudy with a low around 11. Wednesday will be mostly cloudy with a high reaching 18 degrees. And Wednesday night will be partly cloudy with an extremely cold low of minus 9 degrees. Let's check out a sample of our YCN community calendar. The full calendar can be found at our website at ycnnow.com calendar. Tomorrow in New London, there will be a health clinic at the VNA office from 9 a.m. to noon. Also tomorrow in Queechy, Vermont, there will be a bingo night at the public library from 6 to 7 p.m. And on Wednesday, Alice Peck Day Memorial Hospital in Lebanon will hold a blood drive from noon to 5 p.m. Remember, you can submit local events from your community by sending them to news at ycnnow.com. On YCN Sports, there are two big games happening tonight. The Stevens and Newport girls basketball team rivals are facing each other at Newport High School. The game is set to begin at 7 p.m. In boys hockey, Hanover and Lebanon are competing. Hanover will host Concord, and the game will begin at 7.40 p.m. If you catch this report in time, head out to one of these local games. Thanks so much, Matt. When YCN News returns, we'll join Justin Dane for a segment on how to cook delicious seared scallops. The YCN News continues in a moment. 